So my name is Jeff Malone. Um, I'm the CEO of Bob Melbourne Network, and I've um, been working with uh, Hugh and Mike and Roz for some time organizing uh, today's event, really discussing uh, strategic business improvement at, uh, opportunities in uh, in the sector. Um, Bob Melbourne Network, for those of you who may not um, be familiar with it, is the peak body in Victoria for the health tech sector. And that means we represent everybody from manufacturers to service providers um, and, and everyone in between, research organizations, CSIRO, big government. So we kind of, uh, uh, our membership spans the, the full spectrum of, of the sector in, in the state. Um, the reason we're here today is really, go ahead and go to the next slide, um, Mike, is to talk about, uh, you know, brief introduction to who we are and then give you some context for why we're, we're all in the room and why BioMelbourne Network is, is, is helping to, to lead the initiative. So BioMelbourne Network, as the peak, we, we have a strategy of, of providing data and insights, um, identifying opportunities and creating working groups out of those insights, advocacy, uh, health tech industry development. And this initiative falls directly under that, that, um, that strategic pillar. Uh, and then sector promotion, which is you know, trade missions and all kinds of other um, ways that we help connect both individual companies and the industry to others within the state, around Australia and internationally. My own background, next slide, please, Mike. <clears throat> My own background is really comes from manufacturing and comes from a place of, of working in strategic business improvement and in, in, in what was lean manufacturing, continuous improvement, et cetera. But, I, 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 but the tools themselves, as I've been implementing them over the years in, in, in Mexico and in the US and in China and Thailand and Indonesia and, and, and here, um, those same tools when applied against a strategy work against any product or service. And the, the, what you see on the screen are just some of the types of products um, I've been involved with in design and manufacture over my career. Everything from washing machines to heads up display for attack helicopters to bomb jamming equipment, uh, bomb detection equipment, lipstick, um, over the horizon radar. So uh, quite a variety. And when you think about manufacturing, you know, lean manufacturing, if you call it that, or continuous improvement, or again, in this case, strategic business improvement, um, there's a lot of commonalities in, in, in all of these businesses, um, even though they may make different products, they have the back end, which is uh, your purchasing and your finance and all the other services, sales and marketing, all the other services about project management and coordination in the back end um, that these same tools apply to. So it's really immaterial what the product, the output product is, whether it's a pharmaceutical or medical device, we are all sitting, solving training and personnel and HR and finance and project management and all these other these other issues. And that's really what has circled us to this space is to be able to say, let's get a diverse set of companies together who can all work together to support their organizations on a, on a journey that helps them improve their businesses to be more globally competitive, um, whether, the, whether your strategy says you need better quality or better cost or better um, project management or whatever the, the, the strategic objectives of your organization might be, these are the kind of tools uh, that we can apply to it. And also um, the other companies, uh, again, very often are, are attacking exactly the same issues, uh, but from slightly different perspectives and often have best practices and other things to share and help develop. Um, I think that's a... You know, I first came across Hugh O'Donnell. Um, if you look in the lower right-hand corner, there's a, a root bus, which is uh, which are built in around the country, but in, in this case, this one was built in, out in Dandenong, um, where I was based, and I I was part of a consortium um, with Hugh O'Donnell and uh, a variety of other companies, and Hugh will talk a little bit more about that. So I have not only direct hands-on manufacturing and operational experience, implementing uh, these kind of tools and this kind of strategy within an organization, but also have been directly part of a consortium. And I know the power 
that it has to um, to really enable the organization to grow and 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 create its own resources to to tackle these things long term. So without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Hugh, who will take us on a bit of a journey. And Ross and and, and uh, okay. Ross. Okay, thank you, Jeff, and nice to see some familiar faces on, on this um, on this call. And um, so, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on today, and pay my respect to their elders, past and present. So, thank you, everyone, for coming along today. Um, so, I'm one of the co-founders of the High Performance Consortium, um, and I've got Mike and Roz here with me today, who are part of the team. And what you'll notice if you look at our LinkedIn profiles is the diversity we've got in our team, which is actually really important. So running through an agenda today, we're going to go through the Australian challenge to compete globally. I think a lot of you will identify with what we cover there. We're going to talk about what's the opportunity. We're going to also talk about the HPC track record and benefits to HPC members and then how to get involved. There's a lot to cover it when you start to talk about consortia and how it can benefit your business or your organization. We're not going to be able to cover all of that today, but we will actually at the end talk about a pathway to actually exploring that further. Um, yep, yeah, Mike, if you can, I'll pass it over. So thank you. So what we just wanted to do now is spend a couple of minutes just to really be clear and understand from you what the one thing is that you want to get out of today's session. We appreciate everybody's busy. You've given up your valuable time. So we just want to make sure that we provide the information that's of value to you. So what we're hoping is that each person would just say their name, their title, and the company they work with and what they'd like to get out of today. And Mike, just to let you know, that's gone back to the um, Zoom screen. I think Mike's going to capture this for us live. Thank you. So can we please start with Sarah? Would you be okay to kick us off, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Roz. Thank um, so Sarah Kingsmith, I'm Manager of Sector Partnerships with the Australian MedTech Manufacturing Centre. So that's a group within the Victorian Government Innovation and Technology Branch, which is really looking at how do we support our manufacturing sector to really produce more MedTech products here. And so really like to get out of today yeah thanks yeah just really keen to understand i guess where this conversation's at and maybe where we can support and um how we can you know come at it from a policy angle as well thank you thanks sarah declan to you please yeah um afternoon everybody so um yeah my name is Declan McGinty. i'm the head of operational excellence at the uh, parkville site which is part of the uh, csl Limited, so I'm in the CSL Securus uh, side of the business. Um, and yeah, I don't have a, a large expectation for myself. I'm curious uh, of what we're going to talk about today. And um, yeah, always open to be a part of support and supporting other businesses and supporting other individuals. So um, you know, that's, that's the mind mindset I come in with, uh, something like this today. And that's a great mindset. So thank you, Declan. What we're after is curiosity. Monica, to you, please. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Monica Gretzky. I'm the uh, head of um, continuous improvement at the bearing facility in Broadmeadows. So Declan's peer. Um, similar to Declan, I'm very curious to understand um, what what we're going to talk about today and, and also how we can leverage the collective knowledge from the group um, to move forward and, and continuously improve. So so that'll be my sort of position today. Thank you. Thanks. Sanchitha. Yep. Hello. Uh, afternoon everyone. My name is Sanchita Fernando. I'm from OptiScan in Melbourne. Um, I don't have too much of expertise from this meeting apart from understanding what uh, networking we can have and what sort of uh, learnings we can have from uh, tapping into the resources available, uh, particularly from a strategic business uh, perspective for our company. Uh, and I didn't introduce myself. I am the engineering manager at OptiScan. Thank you. Thanks. Rachel, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel. Um, I just wanted to gain further understanding about uh, more, yeah, more curiosity about what's going to be talked about today, I think. Thank you. Thanks. And Angeline?
Hi, Angeline. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank yeah, you. Excellent. Um, and I'm here, uh, probably not too dissimilar to the other the people who just spoke up. So I, I've come from the agri-food sector, so I'm quite keen to just hear about I guess um, how it's been applied in in the in the biomedical kind of space here and and bio industries and see if there's any transferable things that um, I can learn, but also equally share anything back from my space as well. Thank so nice you. Everyone. Oh, sorry, I think I've got everybody. I haven't missed anyone, but um, thank you all. That's really helpful. What that will do for us particularly is knowing that you're curious. Then I hope that we can satisfy your curiosity by the end of the session. So I'll now just hand over to, um, I'm sorry, hand over the next slide. Yeah. Okay, so we're all probably familiar with this photo. Uh, I guess the thing I get out of this is that even in a team, you can develop a, a blind spot. And uh, and I guess I come back to, I remember um, I was in corporate and our global CEO came out to one of our operations. We walked around. I said, what do you think? He said, this is the best operation. I've seen in the world and we had about 80 or 90 plants around the world and I said to him I think that's a problem and he said what do you mean I said I think we're the best of a bad bunch because all we were doing was benchmarking ourselves internally and we weren't getting outside our industry now don't get me wrong we were successful but actually when we started looking elsewhere we saw a lot we, we realized we had lots of blind spots in our own business next one please so then we talk about a high performance consortium and this really came out of our own experience of, as I said, working in corporates and realizing we we're talking to our people and they didn't realize what good looked like or what different looked like. Because a lot of people are a product of their environment and they've been in the same environment for, for a long time. So HPC is about working towards world class. Now what's world class? The good news is it's a never ending bar that keeps rising as you're all probably familiar with. And HVC is about challenge. So it's about sharing our challenges. Our business challenges are the ones you've got in your role and then challenging each other to actually lift the bar and really go after those targets. And sometimes what we found in HVC is people get challenged to actually lift the targets that they're, they're, um, they're aiming for. And what we do is we do that in a collaborative way, in a very practical way. And then the bit that I love is the accountability because you know you're going to meet those similar people again, and we're going to talk about, so how are things going? How do you improve? What's worked? What hasn't? And then also from the point of view of we care about you, we're now going to help you actually push through to the, to the next level. Next slide, please. Over to you, Mike. Thanks very much, you. Um, look, and, and I guess... Um, you know, as Australian leaders, we need to deal with some with some unique challenges, really, to compete on the global market. And and like me, I mean, you know, I've I've been in the, the corporate and consulting world for about thirty five years, working in global roles all, all over the place. Um, the you know the volatility, the complexity, the change that's taking place is really speeding up, as as I'm sure that you've all seen. I won't go into the VUCA sort of stuff and things like that. Um, the challenge is not just about us being able to, if we're trying to compete globally, it's not just about us trying to take on board and understand that change in Australia. It's really understanding what's going on in the markets where we're trying to compete. You know, a, a, a quick example is, you know, one of my clients was sourcing products out of China back in, you know, December, January of, of 2019, 20, just as COVID was hitting. They knew four to six to eight weeks before most other people did what was going to come with COVID. And, and started to look at that, you know, how do we actually make sure we've got the understanding and the insights on the ground for all this sort of change? We also have another challenge in terms of our constrained resources. You know, we're competing against the US, Europe, et cetera, where they have large talent pools, particularly in some of the areas we want to talk about, science, technology, food science, those sorts of things. And in Australia, while we have great expertise, our pool is smaller. How do we actually leverage that? How do we access that? This is now being exacerbated by the challenges financially around inflation, the increased cost of capital. How can we actually address some of those things? With those challenges on, on, on board, you know, we sort of see that then the risk is that businesses go internally to address these business as usual sort of challenges. That inhibits the ability to take, you know, with, you know for the pace of change. 
but it also means we're looking inwardly and not looking at the opportunities potentially to take on some of those challenges and some of those advantages. So one of the opportunities really, um, and, and I'll let Roz talk about that, is how can we actually leverage some of the insight, some of the knowledge in the community that we actually have often the solutions that you're looking for for the problems may already be in place within other businesses. And, and I guess what I'll do now is pass over to Ross to talk about how HBC looks at um, this as sort of an opportunity. Thanks, Mike. And really the opportunity that um, being a member of HPC brings is really to leverage a community of non-competing businesses who work together and achieve results faster than they would alone. We've just heard from Mike, and I think we're experiencing that today's challenges are really complex. Solutions are transdisciplinary. We need to bring a variety of skills and a variety of solutions and work together to really resolve them. And that really does require collaboration and working together. Next slide, please. So the consortium actually provides that opportunity to work in deep collaboration with other businesses and working in a consortium enables businesses to accelerate their results, whether it be business improvement to enhance operational effectiveness or commercialization of innovation, which may also lead to potential opportunities to attract government funding through collaboration for innovation, such as working with unis or research organizations. It accelerates the application of new technologies and methodologies, such as the use of AI and digital tech. It accelerates the rate of change and development of your people through applied learning. And it provides access to experienced HPC facilitators and their extensive networks. And we know from the previous HPC members, they really value the ex um, external perspective that the HPC facilitators can bring and also use of the subject matter experts that we bring in as required. Next slide, please, and I'll pass to Hugh. So why, why would you even consider HPC? So actually, HPC was established actually in November 2002, and that was in response to a, a grant application that, that three of us got together and put in, and we received some funding from the Victorian government that was under the um, agenda for new manufacturing, I believe. One of the interesting propositions which we put to the government was that this consortium had to be self-funding at the end of three years. Otherwise, we would have failed. And, and I must say, uh, they were quite pleased to hear that and actually quite surprised. And at the end of three years, that's exactly what happened. So the members actually, based on the results that we achieved, said, we want to continue. We don't need the government funding. We actually need to get on with this. And I have to say that the companies did actually match the government funding that was put up. So, I, I, And I must acknowledge the Victorian government at the time for their foresight to actually do this because this actually hadn't been done in Australia. Um, so you can listen to me bang on about this all the time, but actually there's plenty of research that has validated that, um, and this is both at a state and at a federal level on policy reviews, that the consortium has had a very significant impact in manufacturing since 2002. And that's not just in Victoria, by the way. Some of our members have actually built plants interstate as well and indeed overseas. Next slide, please. So these are some of the companies who have been members. And what I'd like you to do is um, think about what strikes you about these companies and maybe put this in the chat if you would, what are some of the words that come to mind when you look at some of these logos? Now, some of these you'll know, others you won't know. What comes to mind? Yep, diversity, yeah, very good. What else? Leaders, yeah. Large and small organizations, perfect. Yeah. What else, when you think about diversity, what comes to mind? Product diversity, yes. What else? Different industries. And complex supply chains, yes. So one of the things that we find in HPC 
is that it's actually incredibly interesting and stimulating for people to go and see other companies and not just to see them, but to actually stand in the shoes of their peers and actually look at the same challenges and opportunities that they're looking at or that exist or that they maybe they can't even see. And what we also find is that it's often, you'll often ask the silly question and people will think, oh my God, how, how come we've never thought about that? And we actually had an example of that in our first consortium, one of our very early visits, we went to, um, to a milk processing plant and we actually had a scientific instruments um, operations director there. And he actually said to me, I'm not, not, not quite sure what I'm going to learn here today. But he had an epiphany about a major problem they had in their supply chain uh, during that visit. And in fact, I caught up with him recently and he was still talking about that moment. You don't get those break, that breakthrough thinking when you're actually with people from your own industry. You tend to slip into these conversations that have similar assumptions and therefore potentially they can be actually blind spots. So it's really good when somebody shows up from a different industry with a different perspective and asks that difficult question. And this is one of the important things in the consortium. It's actually really important that people feel comfortable and know that they can ask those questions and know also that we will work our way through those. And if we don't have the answer, we will go and find them. That's the power of the leverage learning. Uh, the epiphany was actually about using, how would I use mass balance, which they use uh, in continuous process um, industries. So it's like liters of milk in and liters out in terms of, of finished product. And the epiphany they had was around, they were buying a raw material from overseas. They used to order it once a year and they had major losses in the manufacturing and processing of that material. And really just using a, they were trying to um, track every single discrete item. And what they did was they just did a mass balance and realized there was a huge wastage in the system. And that got the focus of the business to actually start looking at that because there was a lot of money involved. Next slide, please. So what are the results? And at the end of the day, this has actually got to deliver top and bottom line results. So these are results that were achieved over a three year period by the collective consortium members. So productivity and productivity is measured by uh, sales per employee. So productivity went up by 23% over three years. Sales grew by 42% and expert sales revenue grew by 126%. And we also, I think, um, created about 156 jobs in that process as well. So one of the important things around HPC is that it's actually about working on what are the critical issues that are in your strategies or critical opportunities or challenges and how do we actually mobilize not just your people but actually other experts from other companies around actually addressing that. And again, if I talk about the accountability then is we may, we're going to meet those people that might be in a month or two months and they're going to ask you, how are you going on that improvement that we all contributed, contributed to? Are you making progress? Are you stuck? Do you need help? Next slide, please. Thanks. And um, I can actually say that I have really experienced the benefits of HPC firsthand. That's me in the center of the photo. It's a younger version of me. But I first met Hugh when I was working at CSIRO it was really recommended that I go and meet with you because my role was really around collaboration and it was recommended to me that HPC was the only true collaboration where businesses were working together to achieve genuine business outcomes for the members of the consortia. Now, that photo was taken at the end of a multi-week design-led innovation program that we embarked on and we embedded the CSIRO researchers into the different businesses and it was really about getting a diversity of thinking from research to industry in both ways. And it was really around how could we bring and enhance innovation within those particular businesses. And that was the benefit to the members was around just rethinking innovation and the way that they were working, uh, including even their business models. 
So this is just touching on a few of the benefits uh, on this slide, but really is about providing access to resources and expertise from our ecosystem that often you won't be able to tap into as a one-on-one -on -one company. And it also provides us to scale in terms of doing it in a way that is then cheaper for each of the members. We can uh, help in embedding and enabling a high performance culture by solving real business issues. Hugh's already mentioned about accountability because the leaders hold their peers accountable for delivering improvement. And again, I saw that firsthand because at the end of each week, the leaders had to come back and report on their homework and what they had actually done in implementing the learnings from one week to the next can help with increasing the retention of your high potential people because working in the consortium provides stretch opportunity, provides learnings into other industry sectors, but also the nature of the challenges that you bring to the table provides those stretch opportunities. And the best thing about being an initial founding member is you have the benefit of shaping the consortium priorities and the program for the year. And it's really about you putting in what the challenges are that you're facing in your business. Next slide, please, Mike, and over to you. Thanks very much, Roz. And you know, we've we've covered a few of the key points and the benefits and other things like that. Obviously, as Hugh said at the start, there, there's a lot more behind this. Um, so we're going to have a Q&A session sort of shortly, but just to, to highlight where we're looking to go from here. And, and I should highlight that while we are partnering with Biomelbourne Network, we're not limiting membership to the Biomelbourne ecosystem. We are, I guess, talking initially at a broader life sciences, including food, nutritional um, and functional foods, those sort of things as part of this as well. And depending on what the founders of the um, consortium are, are looking for, we may extend that beyond that uh, as well, because as we've talked a number of times about, diversity in industries op opens up eyes and accelerates um, business benefits. So where to from here? I mean, uh, firstly, uh, we, we will follow up, obviously, and give you a copy of the slides and the presentation um, and the video. Uh, we will be, um, if you'd like to find out more in detail around the program, what's covered off in the program in the first year and, and other things, then email me as in Hugh um, or, or message us in chat. We will be looking to set up individual company meetings to go through that. Um, importantly, understand your objectives and your challenges to make sure the fit is there with HPC alongside assessing membership fit versus our criteria. The High Performance Consulting is not for every business. Um, there is a, there, it requires commitment to be part of that because you're only as good as your weakest link within a consortium. We need everyone to be on board and contributing. From there, we will be looking to set up a free test drive, which will be a, 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 you know, a, a day where we actually go through and you experience some of the tools and the other things like that that we um, will be running. Uh, at the moment, that's targeted for the 14th of March. Through the interviews, we will re reassess that. But if we get a quorum of people on that date, that's fine. Uh, if, if we really need to change it based on feedback, we will do that as well. And it will be by invitation only. Uh, and uh, if, if necessary, we may have to look at a, a second date as well, depending on how we go through those interviews. The target is to launch this mid-2024. Um, that's uh, you know, linked into the financial year. So we will be looking to get a, a final core group of consortium members prior to that to sort of kick off um, in the second half of the year. So now I just want to open up uh, the the opportunity for you to ask questions. Um, it can be as detailed as you like about any particular area. So if there are any questions you can either ask them um, verbally or if you find it easier to put it in chat, uh, then we can cover it off that way as well. So the first question coming through, if you can see it is, will the consortium be consultants doing the doing or will it be building internal resources and strengths within the partner organizations? Um, Hugh, I'll hand that over to you to to answer, please. Sorry, I just missed. Okay, I'm just reading it. No, 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 we're not doing the doing. So, so what's the best way to learn? The best way to learn is for people to apply learning. So it's really a, a facilitation and coaching model. And uh, one of the first things we do is, um, let's say a company's got a particular challenge. And I can think of one, we had one company that, 
um, won a major contract. They needed to reduce their uh, costs in the bid by 20%. And, and we brought a team together of experts from procurement, engineering, design, and within two days, we'd reduced the cost by 30%. Um, so that was a combination of us kind of knowing our experience, knowing what we needed when we did the scope for that event, and then actually uh, going to the members and actually really selecting, saying, this is what we're looking for, who would like to come and participate. And one of the great things that happens in that is the people who come and participate and achieve those outcomes in such a short time go back to their own businesses really fired up and turbocharged and feeling very validated in terms of their capabilities and, and have they contributed. We also, um, one of the structures within the consortium is we do coaching as well. So individual members have their own individual coaching days. And yes, in some of those, we will bring our own expertise to bear because we've all, you know, I've been consulting for about 20 years. I had about 20 years corporate experience as well. And, and so Mike and Roz are very experienced as well. So yes, you do get access to that knowledge, but always our focus is how do we transfer that knowledge to your business and to your people and to the members? Because we like nothing better than to see those businesses kick on from there and actually you know, improve and sustain that improvement. Does that answer that question? Uh, you, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, Hugh, uh, uh, just on that point that you're making, um, because I was, um, I was one of the, I was the the primary person driving continuous improvement and and in, in in the business at Volgren, for example, and I know that when the consortium got together, it was again my part, my equivalence at these other organizations at my level. Um, and that started yeah. to help me build a network of people who were doing similar things, who had similar mindsets, who were working in organizations that were looking for best practices, a place I could ask questions and do those things. But it also made sure that when Hugh and the HPC would come in, they would be talking to the senior management and saying, hey, what's your strategy? What are you trying to get out of it? And that actually really helped them clarify what they wanted and, and that yeah. helped allocate the resources to us so that we could get the resources um, to, to, to do the projects and we could get the time and we could get the uh, access to, to, to um, um, you know, again, the things that we needed to, to make those projects happen. And again, when we reported back uh, another month or two months later on, on what we were doing, um, everybody was accountable, including the CEO to the other CEOs and the senior execs. So yeah. it really helped at a, at a, at a number of levels. And I was going to add that the program that I was involved with was really quite different because it was uh, each of the businesses were reviewing who their actual customer was and they were building a customer persona. They were going to test the market to really see what the customers thought about their business and it just reinforced their business model and we saw one of the businesses actually pivot and change the direction that they were going in through doing that exercise. Yeah. Thanks, Roz. Um, other questions from the, the, the group, either in chat or verbally? Okay. Well, I, I'll ask one question, maybe first to um to you, Jeff. Um, yeah. and you sort of alluded to this is one of the questions that often come up is what what's different about the high performance consortium from any other network? Uh, so maybe you can give a view of that, and then and Hugh can answer as well. Well. I mean <clears throat> I think the most important bit was, again, having that that clarity of strategy for the senior level, and then building that network at the lower level. And and we only have so it wasn't about coming in and teaching us. You know, we would learn tools as we needed to, but it was actually about saying um, aligning the businesses and and providing that network and providing that accountability. And and that meant. We were doing it ourselves, and and over the course of the first twelve or eighteen months, we were we were part of the consortium. What ended up happening was that our own internal culture changed, and that's yeah. what meant yeah. that no matter what happened after that, once you have actually built that internal culture that is um, evolving and is open to change and is supportive, 
um, that's really powerful. And that's probably the thing that I would say we're trying to, and, and part of the reason that I'm involved in this today is that I know the power of it. And I know that our ecosystem uh, and, and our organizations will all benefit from, you know, whatever strategically you're looking for, whether it's the outputs or quality or cost reduction or whatever those things may be. Um, but you're not going to get there without having a culture in your organization that supports continuous improvement. You cannot drive it down from the top down. It just doesn't work that way. The people who are doing that work need that support and you have to learn to build that culture internally. But once you do, the momentum goes on its own and you end up with you end up going places you never expected to because once you get over that hump and it starts to build momentum, it's really powerful. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I might add, so I'm going to talk about so you can't be a prophet in your own land. Hmm. So we had some very large organizations, as you would have seen from um, from the, the logos, and you'd kind of go, well, they have all the resources. Why are they in a consortium? And I'm thinking of one in particular, they had quite a large improvement team. And when we visited that site, the members were really kind of intimidated and impressed by the level of resources they had. But when we started to dig in, they were really struggling to get traction internally because they were actually part of that organization. People knew them very well, but also um, it's what I call the, you know, the profit. They often don't listen to the profit. So we were able to come in with members and in fact, they were able to go to other businesses and really apply the tools and uh, that they had in a very effective way. And then we had the conversation, well, why can't you do this back at your own business? What's happening? And then we were able to have a conversation with the senior managers there. We talked about that and we facilitated that as outsiders because as HPC facilitators, we'd all been execs. So we knew sometimes the frustration that, that, you you felt or I certainly felt when I was in those roles going I know what has to be done but my people don't seem to get it what is the problem they're stuck and taking so taking those people to other places kind of unlocked that potential and raised their awareness around it so it's very it's a lot easier to make changes in other organizations than it is in your own so that's actually really important the other thing is the link to strategy and accountability what we have found is one of our CEOs, I remember talking to him one day, we were actually having a conversation about uh, the word network. And he looked at me and he said, don't you ever call yourself a network? And I said, what do you mean? He said, this is a consortium. I'm in lots of networks. He said, what I get out of this is I'm a CEO. The accountability that, that HPC generates amongst my managers uh, with their peers really drives improvement in my business. I can't get them to do stuff, but you can. That is invaluable. Do not call yourself a network. So this is about getting in there and getting things done. It's not meant to be an encumbrance. It's there to support everyone in the organization or those that get involved to actually deliver on the objectives and the challenges that we have in front of us. It's not industrial tourism. It's very much about how do we improve the business? And by the way, if you don't have a plan to improve your business, we need to talk about that because that's probably an issue in itself. And that's where we start. Yeah. Yep. May, may I, um, uh, and, and a lot of times it, it, when people get into these, they think um, uh, it, it sounds very grandiose and it sounds very grand and it does have big results. But a, a lot of times my own personal experience has been, it, it comes out of, Lots of, uh, there are sometimes these huge wins that you get, the aha moments, mm -hmm. epiphanies. But very often, it's a, it's a lot of little improvements that come together to make a huge tidal wave of improvement. We, we would go, when I was at... Uh, I, I Jeff, made, I'm going to cut you off, sorry, yeah. because we're, I'm just conscious of time. We've got about a minute left. Um, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was off, man. I yeah, you were off. I know you're passionate about it, really which is role. really, really good. I'm just going to play my hard ass role, um, <laughs> which is great. Um, I, so, so look, I'll tell you the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, look, I, I'm, if there are, firstly, um, I, I think just in terms of next steps, you know, uh, hopefully we've 
Sorry, I'll jump in, Roz, but um, hopefully we've covered off the, the points here about your curiosity, getting better understanding. Obviously, we can only cover a certain amount within the time we have. Really, this was um, here and set up to get an introduction and then follow up, I guess, with the more important thing, which is having, I guess, more of a one-on-one a -on -one session, as I talked about before. Hugh, do you want to just um, cover this off as a yeah. final reminder and close out the meeting, please? Yeah, and look, this is really, we're, we're not going to come and, and do a hard sell on you. This is really about an exploratory conversation, understand what your challenges are and can we help, you know, and that that that's really what it's about. And we can answer any questions that you've got around HPC. And just to emphasize the consortium that we're building will be based on the needs of the members. So getting in early and working with us on that means we can really target what we're doing and and design it that way so if you if you are interested just drop me an email or connect with me on linkedin or whatever and happy to um you know we can arrange a time to catch up mm. and thank you everyone for attending